church. Blessed be the Lord. Thank God for his faithfulness and his strength and help that is sufficient for us every day. Turn with me to 2 Samuel chapter 12 from verse 1 to 3. 2 Samuel chapter 12. Please welcome Bishop Ralph with me tonight. <laughs> Hallelujah. God bless you, man of God. Thank you for coming. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for your partnership, your friendship of the years. The Lord bless you and surround you with favor in Jesus' mighty name. 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 1 to 3. Then the Lord sent Nathan to David. And I came to him and said to him, There were two men in one city, one rich and the other poor. The rich man had exceedingly many flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing except one little hill lamb, which he had bought and nourished. And he grew up together with him and with his children. It ate of his own food and drank from his own cup and lay in his bosom. And it was like a daughter to him. Amen. Now, you know that that's a parable speaking about how important Bathsheba was to her husband Uriah but I want you to take your mind off that and let's look at this phenomenon that is a bit common with white people but not common here they said this particular man as described in this parable as one lamb a hue a female lamb and he got so fond of him, he bought it. And after he bought it, he nourished it. Then he started eating the food of the man. He had a place in the man's table. He drank from the man's cup. Please, how many of you can drink from the cup with, and allow your dog to drink from your cup huh he drank from his cup verse 3 i mean verse 3 he laid in his bedroom and it was like a daughter to him why is it that it's almost impossible to have that type of relationship with your pet Especially in Nigeria. Why? Because it's an animal. That's number one. Number two reason is because you are in two different worlds. Animals are driven principally by instinct to survive. While man is driven by logic. Man survives, wants to survive, but there are other considerations in human mind than just survival. So sometimes when you start the journey with an animal, you want to create friendship of that nature, it won't last because you are operating at two different wavelengths. Are you following me? In Genesis chapter 2, verse 18 to 20, the Bible made us to know that this is not a very common experience. The Bible says, and the Lord God said, it's not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. Continue. And out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field, every bird of the air, and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. And whatever Adam called each living creature, that was his name. But verse 20 said, So Adam gave names to all cattle, to the birds of the air, to every beast of the field. But for Adam 
was not found a help comparable to him. Adam had a company of animals around him, but he didn't have a bond. Because they were operating in two different worlds. Are you following me? So, when you want to jump a barrier of almost trying to create a connection between you and your pet, you know that's a major barrier. You have to stretch. And because the reason why we don't have those type of relationships more in Africa is because we don't even feel it is worthy of being invested in. We don't even have time. Some of you will say, this goat that I will kill and make pepper soup out of is the one that I will. You get what I'm saying? Love is a very strange phenomenon. Love can bring two alien worlds together. I've had strange things. You will see white people that would die and leave an inheritance for a dog. Have you had it before? And we were asking a question Are these people okay? Some of you are more dependable partner than any human being. And they are not assuming they created a bond. It was training, it was work, and they got something. It's called law. Okay, tonight our message is consequential order. A consequential order. Let me tell you what it means in law. It's a law, legal term. When they give a consequential order of judgment, isn't it? Okay. It means there is a main judgment. The main judgment consequently can infer that certain, other th certain things can follow it. Are you following? For example, if I discharge somebody and say, you are discharged and you are discharged. In automatic, in, in our actual sense, it should be you are acquitted. But they have to put sometimes and because somebody can say you are discharged does not mean the judge says you can go. So he has to say you are acquitted. Now they won't leave it to chance that you should know that when we discharge him. So they will have to give. What looks like, I'm, I know I'm doing a layman's, uh, but just follow me. S something that can be built as a consequence of that judgment. Are you following me? Because there are things you will do, not because you feel like doing it, but as a consequence of certain things that you know. Are you following me? For example, how many of you know if you discover today that the cure of HIV is in dogs, there's a high chance that you might start relating with dogs differently. Have you noticed? All this I cannot stand is because you have not seen the economic. There are people now that are now rearing dogs when they had. That one puppy. There are some places if you if you have one puppy, one puppy can go for six hundred thousand. I was like, yeah. I say, yeah. You will soon discover you are calling for problem. Something you are not prepared for. I'm still going somewhere. John chapter 14, verse 15. I'm look, we are looking at consequential order. Possibilities in an atmosphere of love. What are the possibilities? Love will make things that you never think can happen, happen. Love will make you jump barriers that you think are permanent. You will soon discover that they are movable. Are you following me? If you love me, Jesus said, keep my commandments. 
Which means, I don't want you to just say you love me. Consequentially, the way to prove that you love me is what you do with my commandments. So don't just assume and just say, I love you. This must follow it for it to be true that you love me. And so tonight we are looking at certain things that must follow certain things for certain things we hold true in our life to be proven true. Are you following me, Trevor? Back to my story of animals. Proverbs chapter 12 verse 10. Proverbs 12 verse 10. A righteous man regards the life of his animal. But the tender mercies of the wicked are cruel. Proverbs 25 verse 21. Proverbs 25 verse 21. If your enemy is hungry, give him bread to eat. How many of you are always at ease when you read this place? Have you ever met somebody that really hurts you so much and is hungry? And it was your natural instinct to give him bread. What's the first instinct? I was listening to one preacher this afternoon and said, he said, I like the psalm. He said, because the psalms does not veil emotion. Have you noticed? If you read the psalms, the Psalms make people, they will say, Lord, let the habitation be desolate. Most of us are more at home with those things because that's our natural place. When you hear this type of command, it's as if God is, I'm twisting you. If your enemy is hungry, give him bread to eat. If he's thirsty, give him water to drink. I know you have more motivation to do it for, because of the next verse. What's the next verse? For so you will heap coals of fire on his head. Why are you going to do it? Is it because you want to give him bread or because you want to heap coals of fire? <laughs> so the real motivation many a times is it's been very hard because there are people that it takes everything in you to love. I don't know whether you have one or two people like that in your life. Every time you remember them. Have you ever entered a place before? And you're almost like a man. Everybody's happy. But until you saw one man. And as long as you see the man, your mood. A man said to his family in the book of Esther, said, there is nobody the king has honored like me. He said, the only problem I have is this Mordecai. When I see him, every honor that I have, every pleasure that I have, be careful of that one person that can trigger you every time. That can bring you from joy to sorrow. If you don't know how to undo them, you will have your own problem. Can you imagine if a man had just ignored Mordecai and not bowing? He would have nations, 127 provinces ruling from Ethiopia to India was bowing to him except for one man. And because of that one man, he said, ah, I would do everything. Then he signed his own debt. It would have been an inconsequential thing. But he couldn't stand it. If your enemy. But Jesus now told us in Matthew chapter 5. Five from verse 43 to 48. Matthew 5 verse 43 to 48. You have heard and that it was said, you will love your neighbor and hate your enemy. This is our natural territory. We have these two emotions running in our life. It's called what? Love and hate. And the Bible says it's the day you die that your love and your hate perish. They live with you in your lifetime. But God reorchestrates it in such a way that it's instead of you to use it against people, you use it against another phenomenon. For thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. But if you are going to live in this world, those two emotions will be in your life. But may God help you not to use it against people. Or use it against what you never want to be. Are you following me? So you have heard it that you must love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, 
Love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good those, to those who hate you. Pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. That you may be the sons of your father in heaven. For he makes his son to rise on the evil and on the good. He sends rain on the just and the unjust. If you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even task collectors do the same? If you greet your brethren only, what do you do more than others? Do not even task collectors. And in the Bible, when they say somebody is a task collector, it's a son of hell. Therefore, you shall be perfect just as your father is and heaven is perfect. What is Jesus trying to say here? There are boundaries you think you can never cross that is calling you to stretch to cross. Because it is natural to love those who love you. It does not push you. Are you following me? Have you ever told somebody before, even if your wedding is in Katsina and Boko Haram is Rapeji, Jesu Ashowa, Ajodeben. You don't say that to just any type of person. You say that to people you love. Are you following me? But you might not be able to say that to somebody you have been able to convincingly conclude and call enemy. This one, an enemy. But Jesus said, until you are able to do it like that, you are not like your father. Your father has this strength capacity of jumping over so many things to create a connection between people that he has no business creating it with. You don't get it. The same way that man could talk to a lamb and they could become friends. How many of you know that you can treat an animal to a point that the animal understands you? I'm serious. It's, it's a training. You can't. That he understand. The animal can even know when you are sorrowful. Because of because love is a very strange phenomenon. Even animals know it when they when you show it to them. They know. There are people that if a dog sees, he will run. Because the only thing registered in the mind of the dog is when I see this man, he is. Then there are others when they see, they jump. So love is, is even transferable between those two. Different worlds. And the Bible is saying that even in Jesus, in God, love is transferable between these two different worlds of righteousness and evil. Of friends and enemies. You don't get what I'm saying. It's like, and it is unnatural, but it is possible. Are you following me, church? In Exodus 23, verse 4 and 5, my message is simple tonight. You will get it. I say you will get it. Who is getting it? Say I'm getting it past. If you meet your enemy's ox, someone say enemy, ox, or his donkey going astray, you shall surely bring it back to him again. If you see the donkey of the one who ate you lying under his body, you will, and you you will refrain from helping it. You shall surely help him with it. Question. If you see your enemy's donkey falling into a pit, if you overlook it, is it because of the donkey or because of the enemy? So it's not the donkey. The reason why you will react like I don't sin is not the donkey, it's the enemy. So when God said, if you see your enemy's donkey in a under a yoke, you lift it up. What is he trying to do? He's not trying to just create a relationship between you and the donkey. He's trying to tell you that thing you, that person you think you can never reconcile with or make a connection with by the force of love. So listen, it is not even the New Testament that started teaching love. Love is the nature of God. What God was calling them to, in, even in the commandment here, is to be able to do good even to people. That you know don't deserve it. Because it is inherent in the nature of God. Are you following me? 
They didn't understand it, so they thought God was giving them a license to love those who love them and hate those who hate them. And Jesus said, you are not getting the, the, the message of God. Are you getting me, church? In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 9 and 10, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 9 and 10. There are so many powerful possibilities in an atmosphere of love. Love will make you do. Even natural, how many of you know love between a man and a woman? You will do. I remember those days when I was dating mama. She sometimes returned from work 9 p.m. I will go to her house for 15 minutes. I didn't have car. I would fly bike in the night. I used to ask myself, what are you looking for? Then, after 15 minutes, because number one, man of God cannot even stay in the house of a lady too long. There were too many sons that were watching me. Man of God, I'm following you. Following. So, I have to be, so I would, sometimes when I just call her, I'm back home, she would say, ah, you have to be careful. That's too fast. Tomorrow morning, tomorrow evening, I will come. You must have followed me there before. Hey, you you will several times. You see now? So I have witnesses here. Then I will ask myself, kill it. I shall, even sometimes they, she will come. It's not that we went there to eat. All of you that think it's all about Kula. There are strange things you can never logically explain that are possible in the atmosphere of love. And the gospel is a message of love. Are you following me, church? For it is written in the law of Moses, you shall not muzzle an ox while it treads out the grain. That was written in Deuteronomy 25, 4. Don't worry, don't put it. It's written in the law of Moses, thou will not muzzle an ox when he treads out the grain. Uh, you know, when the, when the ox is treading the grain, don't put something in his mouth. You remember what our grandmothers used to do in the village? They would put those goats that are stubborn. What do they put? They would put a tin in their mouth is it? because they are drying cassava, so they don't want the goats to eat the cassava. That's muzzle. But God told Israel, when you, the ox is threshing your corn, you must open his mouth. Which means, it must have capacity to eat. You can't be too greedy that you forget that though he's working for you, that he has to leave. Said, is, then I ask a question. Is it oxen God is concerned about? See how detailed the law is. The law will even tell Israel how to relate with donkey and ass. Do you think God was thinking about animals? Look at the next answer. Verse 10. Or does he say it all together for our sake? For our sakes, no doubt. He was not talking about the animal. That's why I told you when he said, when you see your enemy's donkey fall. It was not about the donkey. It was about the person. Are you following me? For our sakes, no doubt it's written that he will plow, should plow it up. So all these descriptions I've given this evening is not about animal care. I want to talk to you about people. Say amen. Are you trying to teach us how to feed a, a, a rabbit? That's not what I'm doing. If you learn how to feed your rabbit, it's your headache. But this is my primary motivation. Men. Because God has a lot of interest in men. Are you following me? And if you really love God, consequentially you will love men. Do you know why? Men, God has so much interest in men. And there are sometimes, consequentially, when you love somebody, you love what they are. You have to find yourself loving what they love. My wife now knows mercy. She doesn't like you. How can you be around me and you like mercy? They are not even careful. You might start eating cereal now. It's transferable. Because you are dealing with... Do you get what I'm trying to say? Because there are days... I can wake up 
Seven years and said, there's Champions League today. Can you imagine? Even me, man of God, in the morning. Yeah. Champions League, what are Can you imagine? I don't watch much football, but when Messi wants to play, like I'm looking forward to November with passion because of World Cup. Now all our wives should know that they will not have access to TV from November 20. I've given you a heads up. Are you following me? God has one very strange interest in men. And some of you that claim you love God, there you hate men. How? You can't. The consequential judgment follows in accordance with what? The main judgment. Are you following me? If you agree with the main judgment, which is God's law, there is a consequential import it will put on your interaction with men, including the ones you will have no reason to connect with, but he loves them. Have somebody become your friend because your friend's friends before? You are just compelled to be the person's friend. In 1 Timothy chapter 2 from verse 1 to 7, Paul said, Therefore, I exhort first of all that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. Somebody say all men. For kings, for all who are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. Continue. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior. Yeah? Who desires all men to be saved? Someone said the desire of the God that I love is that he loves all men. Mm. I have a lot of issues with men. But I am too dependent on God. Who wants all men to be saved? So sometimes I'm compelled to change my interaction with men because of the God who loves them that I serve. I'm trying to show you how to get an angle with men as you see them in God. God desires all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. Everybody you have met today, God has this desire on them. Did you hear what I just said? Whether they are your work, we are working with you, whether they are the, your cleaners at the office, or they are your bosses, or they are your superiors, whether they came just for a five minute transaction, whether you, are you following me? Whether you saw them on TV, there is one desire of God that is universal. Whether they are literate or illiterate, poor or rich, God desires all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. Verse 5, continue. For there is one God and one mediator and between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. God does not just have a desire. He acted the desire. What is the, what? There is one God. What did he create? He brought a mediator, a reconciler. God does not just mount his desire for men. He acted on that desire. And one of the things he did is that he brought a mediator. Another thing he did, and the man, and the mediator is called who? Talk to me, who is he? The man cried you, verse 6 and 7. Who gave himself as a ransom? We don't just have a mediator that did not do his task. The mediator who gave his life. God has a desire. He raised the mediator. The mediator became a ransom. Do you know what is called a ransom? You know it because of kidnappers in Nigeria. When they kidnap somebody, they say you should go and pay a ransom. If the money does not land, you pay it with pain. How can somebody that does not know how you are laboring tell you to go and bring 50 million? 
as ransom. And they tell you, they have a good way. You pay it, but you are crying when you are paying it, but you will pay it. Ransom is not something you give necessarily with joy, but you do it because it is needed. Are you following me? He gave himself as a ransom for all to be testified in due time. And verse 7 said, For which I was appointed a preacher. Now, he was a mediator. He gave himself a ransom as a ransom. But he didn't stop there. After he gave himself a ransom, he raised men to proclaim it. God's desire for men is very intense. And I pray for you today that you will catch it. Because it should be a consequential thing upon you if you truly love God. If you love him, you will obey his commandment. Are you getting that message? He said, he, he said for which I was a preacher and an apostle, I, I'm, speaking the, I'm speaking the truth in Christ and not lying. Not just that he raised men, he even raised the type of quality of men that must, be, that must go. Men that will speak the truth. A teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. Maybe I should run through about seven things that God did for his desire. Number one, he has a desire. And for that desire, he raised a mediator. And that mediator became a ransom. And after the ransom has been paid, he raised a preachers. And he didn't just raise preachers, he raised apostles. Because a preacher, an apostle is a man who is sent for that purpose. All believers are preachers, but not all believers are apostles. Are you following me? This is the intensity. God even had to separate some people and say, you, 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 because I have a desire for all men, you have been sent forth for this assignment. He has, he's a mediator who paid a ransom, who raised the preacher, who is an apostle, who speaks the word in truth, who became a teacher of Gentiles. Gentiles are people that were disconnected from the covenant because God wants all men to be saved. That's a very intense passion. One of the burdens I have tonight is to trust God to make you see how men are important to God. We ignore people too much under the slightest irritation. I don't like how he talks. Some of you don't mind if somebody goes to hell as long as you don't like I talk. Some of you don't even mind. Some people go to hell as long as you don't like how he dresses. Problem with me, you tell me, but my son, he wears green too much. There are more serious issues. And you have to have the capacity to overcome. Not even because you love the man, but as a consequence of the love you have for God who loves the man. Are you following me, church? Acts of the Apostles, chapter 20, verse 26 to 28. Glory to God. Is somebody getting my message now? Your effectiveness is always going to be consequential on your understanding of God's love for people. If you don't understand how intense God's love is for men, you will not deploy at your fullness he wants all men to be saved he erased a mediator a reconciler who became a ransom and raised preachers and apostles who speak the word in truth who become a teacher of gentiles so that people who never knew god before can start talking about him it's so important as an agenda of god in acts 20 from verse 26 paul said Therefore, I testify to you this day that I'm innocent of the blood of all men. Why? For I have not shown to declare to you the old counsel of God. Therefore, take it to yourselves and to the flock among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to shepherd the church of God which he purchased with his own blood. You know, if I, I'm rushing ahead of my time, but let me, let me say something to you. In the Old Testament, God says, if I raise, if I raise you as a watchman, if there's a watchman over a city and the people place him as a watchman, if there is crisis coming into the land, he should blow the alarm. He said, if he sees it but does not blow the alarm, 
I will require their blood from your hand. There is their blood from your hand. One motivation that can push you is to be, is, is to say, I am, Paul said it there. He said, I have, I am, what did he put it in verse 26? I am innocent. You can be innocent of the blood of men, except you have won them when you saw what is coming. Then he said, but if you sound the alarm and it does not eat, then his blood will be on their head. But in this place, he said, take it to yourself as overseers over the flock that the Lord has made you overseers to shepherd the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. There is another blood. Which one is your greatest motivation? Their blood or your own blood? You know what? When you don't talk, it will be your own blood. When you talk, you will be free from their blood. Or there is one blood you are quiet about. It's the blood of people who love God. Who Look at what they said, verse 28. Where are you? Where are you? To shepherd the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. The third motivation is the blood of Jesus. These people are so important to God that Jesus died. The reason why I'm shouting is not just to be innocent of blood, is to, is to reveal the quality and price of his blood. You didn't get what I just said. Many a times, the reason why most of us are preaching is to be free from the blood of all men. And it's important. But I raise, give you a higher level of motivation to see the price God paid for them that they must not miss. He shepherded them and shed his blood. Look at 1 Corinthians 9 from verse 19 to 23. So one of the motivations of the overseers of this church should not even be that their own blood, that they are void of offense of anybody's else's blood, is that they understand the price of the blood of Christ. Now, how many of us in church today knows the price of salvation? What is the price of salvation? There are some of us here that, you know, recently it dawned on me that I don't think FC Bar is ever taking bike. Always. She, she might think naturally now that every human being. So sometimes when you are taking them, you say, Why is, which car did you bring? They think that it's normal life. And I thank God. And it's getting to a point that where I can't even imagine. You know that it's possible. It's, it's one day you just discover that they are in SS1. And you just say, oh, ah, you want to come from school? Oh, mom. Take car. They say, ow. They don't know what it means. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Now, but here, the motivation, there is a reason why I gave that story. I forgot it. I will get it. The motivation is not just the price we have paid. It's that we know there are too many people who don't know what God has done for them. Do you know that Jesus has never lacked before until he became flesh? This is the grace of God. That Jesus, though he was rich, he became poor. So that to his riches, he, death could not hold him, but he died. You don't get it. How many of you can change your social economic stand to reach people? Okay, from today, I will not drive. I will be walking on the street so that I can talk to people. Will you be able to do it? Because for some time, you have left that world. Jesus put on the form of a servant. 
The Bible says he became obedient, not just obedient. He became obedient to the point of death. There is obedience, though. If an obedience will take you to death, it's a different realm of obedience. But he did it. He cried, Father, if it is possible, let this cup be taken from me. Death was alien to the prince of life. He does not know what is called death. You don't get it. But as he was saying, he said, but not as I will. That love must be so intense. I will go and taste death. I would, so it's like, it's like a, a child that has never taken public transport and he finds one boy. Say, Daddy, don't come and be carrying me again. I will fly him back. You know that when you see that type of visitor coming to your house, you know that job has been cut out for you. Because your child that has never it's always saying, when are you coming to pick me? And I say, don't come. I don't even mind. I want to take a bike. Me and Ike, Ife will be coming together. As a father, is it? Who is Ife? Are, are you getting that? Okay, that was what I wanted to point. It must be something outside of normal connection that will make a man take one step lower than who he is. And Jesus was not just one step. He took, he went from being God to being man and not just being man to die the death of a sinner. God must really love me. How many of you know God loves me? Some of those people that you hate, God loves them. Some of those people that say, like, nothing can bring God together. How many of you have people in your life that say, nothing can bring God together again i have people that have created i'm not fighting when we get to heaven had the marriage of her oh say shall gather but in heaven <laughs> because they've done things i'm not giving you something easy you are only going to be able to do certain things as a consequence of the main thing god himself has done if, you are, if it's left to you by yourself, you will have no capacity and strength in yourself to be able to execute. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Look at that 1 Corinthians 9 from verse 19. For though I am free from all men, Paul said, I have made myself a servant to all that I might win the more. I am free. But I made myself, took that pattern in Jesus, who though he was equal with God, he did not consider a robbery to be equal with God, but he took on. It was a personal decision because he understood that if Jesus did that for men, what will I do? The question I'm asking you tonight, if Jesus did that for men and you love Jesus, what will you do for people? Including you that has never preached to one man this year. Somebody left glory to die for those men. He now raised you to preach to those men. But you didn't like their mouth odor. Pastor Maurice, I really wanted to talk, but is it? Sometimes when he's speaking, saliva will just be spitting. I can't stand it. I'm too. I'm too I'm too, you know, I went to Harvard and when I was asking which school, he said four years. Four years. Oh, yeah. I don't know where oh, year is. Jesus loved them. When Jesus is true with you, you will marry some of them with your Harvard certificate. You will learn obedience. Say amen like thunder. Your own father sent you to, from primary school, you've been paying 300,000. Don't worry. There are some boys in Agege now that are your husbands tomorrow. Jesus will walk there as he's walking with you. Then he will, by the force of his love, make you do what you will say you can never do. It happens in the natural, but I'm not here to speak about natural things alone. I'm speaking about what God wants us to do with men. You understand my body tonight? You know, I'm trying to challenge you 
to evangelize. But some of you don't like human beings. You love yours. Even your coming to church is self-love. That's the only thing. That's why it never occurs to us. You know, you remember those lepers? They were eating, they were eating, they were... They now say, ah, what we are doing is not good. Have you discovered you are not the only one that has a problem? In this world, have you noticed? The same way the word you are hearing it helps you, it will help any other person. So invite them. What did I say? Some of you have not lost your mind because you have a church. And can I tell you the truth? You're no strong at all. Every time you come here, they just give a word. You just you use it for two days. You use that, you usually want to hold body. It's a too great earthquake, too great earthquake, too great earthquake. It's a we are fleeing through. I know it doesn't last. Three days after, you need another one. But God is not tired. He gives you embracing this identity of faith. Yes, embracing, 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 embracing. Two days after, I said, two great trials. I said, yes, yes, no lack, no leftover. Then you now go around as if you are strong. Now lie. Somebody has eaten one cold snack for six months. Every time they go to their show, it's youth harvest, uh, harvest, choir harvest. They are all dancing, they are dancing. They have your problem. You don't have a greater faith. You just have a supply. Are you following me? And you need to see it like that because that will compel you to minister to people. Because there's nothing you are going through that men are not going through. Say the amen like thunder. This man said, go back to that scripture. He said, I became all things to all men that I might win some. To the Jews, I'm free from, I made myself a servant to all that I might win the more. To the Jew, I became a Jew that I might win Jews. To those who are under the law, as under the law, that I might win those who are under the law. To those who are without the law, as without, without law, not being without law towards God, but under law towards Christ, that I might win those who are without law. To the weak, I became as weak that I might, be, I might win the weak. Some of you, some people don't need to hear the fact that you never sinned before you got born again. It's not going to help them. Keep your testimony. For some of you, if, if many people come around you, you want them to know you have never been like them. That's why we don't win people. Take kilo one for hero. Yes, hero, teeny boyfriend, what nonsense. And I lie, your own was an internal combustion. It was your father and your mother that helped you to have common sense. You were worse volcano. You were just inside. It was an internal earthquake. So I want to thank God. It was me and my husband. It was the day we married. Ah, hungry. I lie. Some of you here, the, type, the pale of blood. The pint of the blood of the lamb that secured your destiny was massive. <laughs> Who knows what I'm talking about here? I know, don't talk about it. They'll just keep it to you. But you know. So the week I became as weak. Let some people know that there are times you don't feel like praying. Don't always come like and do say everything. But when I just start, as a ranking member in the spirit, when I start, I say, Father, that's three hours. Now, hapa rada, take a bath, take a bath, tanto, pata, edete, kumba, dina, haka, buka. Are you an ass? <laughs> well, somebody that was talking to me said, he said, I remember the day you told us when you got born again, you didn't even know how to pray. I just, those days, I would just wake up in the morning. The only song I know was an a cappella song. You mean we joy in your presence? <laughs> now I'm laughing. But Jesus took me serious. So let people know Jesus is taking them serious. Don't say, but you didn't get the Greek word. Did you, did you always get the Greek word? The Greek word. I remember the first time I was praying in tongues. At a point, I got confused whether I was really baptized. Because it was monosyllables. Share more. <laughs> Who are you harassing? Should we show your story? 
Uh, so stop harassing everybody. So the week I became as weak. Say amen. That I, may, I have become all things to all men. Somebody say all men. Why all men? Because God wants all men to be saved. The problem is that most of us cannot do all men. We can do a type of men. You get what I'm talking about? A type. Uh, upwardly mobile. Some of you, when you say upwardly mobile, your evangelism drive comes up. But when you see some people, say, Jesus, you can save them. Save them. <laughs> you love money. I, I became all things to all men that I might save some. I do this for the gospel sake that I may be particular of it with you. I'm running. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 1 to 4. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 1 to 4. Ah, so like, ah, let me get, let me run. I'm taking too much time. 1 Peter 5, 1 to 4. 1 Peter 5, 1 to 4. The elders who are among you are exhort. I, who am a fellow elder and a witness of the suffering of Christ, I'm also a particle of the glory that will be revealed. What did he say? Shepherd the flock of God which is among you, serving as overseers, not by compulsion, but what? Willingly, not for dishonest gain, but for what? But eagerly, yes? Not as laws over those entrusted over you, but being examples to the flock. You are overseers to God's flock. How did he ask the, how did he get the flock? He purchased the flock. What did he purchase the flock with? With his blood. So that when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that does not fade away. So many a times the reason why we keep doing this work is not the flock, it's the chief shepherd. Our interaction, our motivation with his flock is not a flock. Because the flock is sometimes dirty. The flock does sometimes is repulsive. But we are not doing it just for the flock. There is a sheep shepherd who will appear. Are you following me? And when he appears, you will get your reward. So sometimes you are going to do something and nobody is going to praise you for it. But when the sheep shepherd appears, you will get what? Your reward. Somebody say Amen. So, into the message I'm trying to preach now. In John chapter 21, verse 15 to 19, three times Jesus asked Peter, Peter, lovest thou me more than this? He said, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Then he said, feed my lamb. You would have had no business except that they were my lamb. Uh, what you transferred is not your love for lambs. It's your love for me. So because you loved me, as somebody that you love committed anything to your hand before, then keep this thing for me. It is not that thing again. It is the person. Are you following me? So you know why I keep preaching? It's not the flock. It's the shepherd of the flock. Keep my flock. And I want, because I love him. So the second time he came to Peter, he said, do you love me more than this? So your ministry is always a consequence of your love for God. Are you following me? Because you will meet too many things on the pathway of it to be repulsive, except that you have a love for God. And if that thing is so important to God, then it automatically becomes important to me because I love him. Are you following me? And the third time he said, do you love me more than this? He said, Lord, you know I love you. No, he said, feed my sheep. Why is it that the command always follows the first thing is, do you love me? If you love me, you will know that I paid the price for this flock. Are you following me? I paid the price. What price did I pay for it? My blood. So I want to get to a point where my motivation for my shout is not their blood alone, not my blood, but his blood. Are you following me? It's not just because they will perish, because there are times I could have overlooked uh, just the, that fact. But I love the one who owes them. So I'm going out and I see my neighbor's child, whom I love, playing in the sand and wounding himself, and I drive home. What type of neighbor are you? 
What do you do? You pack. You carry the child. In fact, sometimes you will take the child to the house. It's not the child. It's your neighbor. Human beings are not the motivation for ministry. It's your love for God that sends you to man. Are you following me, church? And that's why you do it willingly, not by compulsion. You do it eagerly. You do it not as lots, but as examples, knowing fully well that when the sheep shepherd will come, you will receive a reward. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. What brings me to one story? In the book of Ruth, the book of Ruth is a, it's a story. In Ruth chapter 1, verse 1 to 18, the Bible introduced a particular man to us whose name was Elimelech. Who has a wife whose name was Naomi. And they have two children whose name is Malon and Chilon. And the two children had two wives whose name is Ofa and Ruth. And there was a famine in Israel and the man traveled to Moab. And when he got there, the Bible said the man died. And after he died, the Bible said his two sons, Chilon and Mahon, died. So he left, he left there was now Naomi, Ofa, and Ruth. And Ruth, Naomi decided to go back home. And the two daughters-in-law were following her. And Naomi looked at them. This your decision makes no sense. I'm old. In the law, there was a possibility that if she had other children, they could have married them. But she doesn't have any other child except those two. So what happened? She looked at them and said, you have to go back to your father's house. He said, because even if I give back today, if I get pregnant today, I can't give back today. And if I give back today, the child will not marry you now. Your, there's your, your biological clock will not stop. So go back. Then, Ofa said, Mama, I love you. But what you are saying makes a lot of sense. And the Bible says she kissed the woman and went back. Then Naomi turned to Ruth and said, What are you waiting to do? Your other sister in law has gone back. And now Ruth said, Don't ever speak to me about going back again. Like warning. Where you die, I die. Your God shall be my God. Your people shall be my people. And she couldn't entreat me not to leave you, not turn back from following you. Wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you lodge, I will lord. People shall be my people. Your God shall be my people. This is a high price. Somebody is paying. Risking all our own life and chance for something that has no promise. Then when you get to Ruth chapter 2 from verse 5, Ruth chapter 2 from verse 5 to 23, the Bible said Boaz was coming to his field. When he got to the field, he lifted his eyes and said, whose young woman is this? That was Ruth walking in the field and said, oh, is the woman that followed Naomi from the land of Moab. And she's been walking from money. She had not stopped except that when she stopped the beat to just rest. And they went to the woman and said, Woman, it is good what you have done. He said, I have heard of all the good things you did to your mother-in-law. I know what it cost you to be here. And I will not just react. I will react to my understanding of the price you paid. And some of us, if we understand the price he paid for men, it will change our orientation and opinion about people. Are you following me? He said, so he told the woman, he said, stay with me. Stay with my people. Please. And he told the people, let nobody trouble her. Let her do all she wants to do. And after the day's work was finished, he sent even certain things with her to her mother-in-law. Why? He was, he was repaying her in the consciousness of the price that she had paid. Are you, are you following me? 
He was repaying her in the consciousness of the price she has paid. The same way, sometimes because we understand the blood that was shed, it makes us to lift our eyes over certain things. There were so many women there. But who is this woman? He said, it's Ruth. And he said, I know. He said, it's the God of Israel. You came to hide under his shadow. I have heard of all the good things you have done. And when he got home, the Bible said, the woman, Naomi, told Ruth and said, Whose field did you go today? He said, the field of Boaz. That's a near kinsman. That's a close relative. Oh my God. In fact, that's a good place. And the woman said, he even said, I should, I should not go to any other field. They were happy. They found something to eat. Then in chapter 3 of Ruth, the woman said, I'm beginning to see a possibility. I'm beginning to see what I didn't see before. The man you went to is a close relative. And according to our law, a close relative has the right to marry you. He said, so go look for where Boaz is, you know, threshing the wheat. He said, when you get there, mark his place. <laughs> when it's night, just lay beside it. Don't lay on top of him. That's the problem I have with people now. Lay beside it. They've laid on top of him. Because you are looking for us, man. Are you getting the word? Lie beside him. Share what? Okay. How was your day? That's enough. Not let me spend and spend the weekend. You are already lying on top. Lie beside. Let's see what the Lord will do. Say amen like thunder. That's by the way. That's good for all singles fellowship. He said, life is and, and the man woke up in the middle of the night and said, hey, what is happening? And the woman said, cover me, cover me. You are a close relative. It's according to your law. Ah, the man said, you are saying the truth. He said, but there's a little problem. There is another kinsman that is closer than me. The right of false refusal is his. He said, if he will do it, that's good. He said, I, he said, what you have even done now is greater than what I've had. Because now, you have not just been faithful to the, to, the, to the living, you have been faithful to the dead. In that you did not, you could have just seen any young person. She was not under that rule. She was a Moabite. But she kept herself under it. This man kept analyzing and appreciating the price she pays at every step. And one problem we have in church is that we forget his price. He said, don't worry. That's what I will do. The next day, you know the story. By Ruth chapter 4, verse 1 to 12. He got to the gate, made witnesses to sit, and ran through a lot. Then the nearer kinsman came, and he told the nearer kinsman, you should redeem the field of Elimelech and his sons. You are a near kinsman. And according to the law, you have the right to buy. And the man said, I will, I will, I will. The man loved the main judgment. Didn't like the consequential order. Get this. Then after the man said, I will. Then Boaz said, just remember that the day you redeem the property, you will marry Ruth. Anybody leru? No leru. You get what I'm saying? You take everything together. The man said, eh? The problem we have that we love the main judgment, but we hate the consequential order that follows it. We love God and hate the man that he died for. How do you get the land? I hate the wife. So the man said, I will not take it. I have been studying throughout the day. Why did this man refuse? Probably, this man, number one, any child that he gives back to will not be his own, will be Elimelech's own. And he will not have a right of responsibility, not just for Elimelech, but for Naomi. He will have to be taking care of a new mother-in-law that is not his mother at old age. 
suddenly he loves the property but he didn't like the responsibility that's the challenge i have with a lot of people who claim to love god if you love me you will keep my commandment let's stop mounting love for god that when the consequential order of our love for god is presented to us we take our step when you have to love the unlovable when you have to accommodate who you never want to accommodate when you have to make room for who you never said you are going to make room for in the name of jesus is it don't let me lose my mind because I'm following Jesus. You have you just get what I'm talking about. But they told the woman. And so in, 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 the, in the law, when somebody refuses such an offer, the person is called the man whose sandal is reviewed, is removed. You can you can go study Deuteronomy chapter 25, verse 5 to 10. You can refuse, but it you will remove your sandal, which means you will remove your own right. And eventually, Ruth married Boaz. And when you get to verse 13 to 22, the Bible says, Then the Lord opened her womb and gave her conception. And Naomi, the women of the land, took the boy and brought it to Naomi and said, Naomi now has a child in old age. Naomi said, I can't give birth. But God had to orchestrate through other people's operation for Naomi. The Bible said Naomi had to take the child from them and brought it to her bosom. She became a mother again. She relieved her experience, an experience that she never thought was ever going to happen in her cycle again. Are you following me? She took, and the child was called Obe, who was the father of Jesse, who is the father of David, who is the father of Jesus. Now, but that was only possible because somebody loved the possessions redeemable and the consequential burdens attached. That was why we had Obed, Jesse, David, and Jesus, who did not think it wrong to be equal with God, but took upon himself. Are you following me? The price. And the only thing that can make you do that, another reason why that near kinsman could have rejected it is because from that point, those children will begin to share his own inheritance that he should have left with his children. And probably he's even a less richer person. So what was not sufficient? That will have be more mouth, she said. Because if you read that place, he said, if I take it, I will mar my own estate. So he preferred his own inheritance and estate to remain as it is. Are you following me? And that's why he couldn't cross it. But when love is there, love sees those things that he ran from We apply to Boaz. Yes, there will be an impact of it on Boaz's estate and Boaz's inheritance. Are you following me? But what God has put in Boaz was able to overcome all those things. It's called love. First Peter 4 verse 8 told us it covers multitude of sin. Proverbs 10 verse 12 told us it covers sin. Are we together? I said, what does it do? It covers sin. Second Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 12 to 15. Thank you, Jesus. Are you blessed? Glory to God. For we do not commend ourselves again to you, but, we, but give you opportunity to boast on our behalf that you may have an answer for those who boast in appearance and not in art. For if we are beside ourselves, do you know the meaning of being beside yourself? Which means when we don't act according to type or according to our nature, it is for God. There is something about your assignment that will take you outside of your normal way of living. It will make you connect with a type of people you never try to connect with. Are you following me? When I first got to Ibadan, the first set of people around me that God gave me an access to were not learned. They were not the, the, the pastor, 
You know, when those days when we go to Pastor Baba two days, you used to follow me. I remember Pastor Jubei used to ask me, but Pastor, how do you connect with these people? Because Pastor Jubei is very cerebral. Who don't just stand it? So sometimes he's just playing game. I mean, the first set of people I connected with are the people that fight on, you must not wear trousers. And I've never believed those things. I was just, but the, the, if we are beside ourselves, we have not lost our mind. It is for God. We are running out. Or if we have sound mind, it is for you. Continue. For the love of Christ compels us. Somebody say the love of God compels us. Others, I mean, there are some types of people I cannot talk to. Love has not been shared abroad in your heart. I have a friend those days, when he hears somebody attends polytechnic, that's the end. See, today, he say, I'm a poly. When he hears it, all his body will be, it will be like, they are giving him need to. At the point, I almost entered the same because they were not even the polite people I met too were not helping. They were always behaving like poly. Like college. You know what I'm talking about? Until I discovered that oh, Nigeria will show you. Now, some of you here, somebody does not have a two one, you cannot marry the person. How will I introduce it at all? You have not, don't worry. Is that your problem? May you not marry educated demonia. The problem is you've been missing it on the Lord you know. Oh you T D H yeah, what what do they call it? All that can answer. Ukute like devil. The love of Christ compels us because we judge thus that if one died for all, what happens? All die. Look at what it now said. And he died for all that those who live should no longer live for themselves. These are consequential conclusions. It's not God that said it though. They are the ones drawing the inference. If one died for all, then all are dead. That means everybody that is living should no longer be living for themselves. Are you following me? But for him who died for them and rose again. Continue. Okay. Do you get what I'm saying? And therefore we know no man according to the flesh anymore. It was a processing of understanding that brought them to we know no man after the flesh. Therefore if a man be in Christ. You, you go quote it without processing the thought. It was not, they were not quoting a place. They were arriving at a conclusion. You don't get it. That if a man be in Christ, it was an arrival from a process of understanding. That from now, we are not even going to be looking at people for who they have, their background. No, because we now understand that we are all dead. And we are now alive. The life we live now is not us. So we have made a conclusion that a Christian is more than a rich man. You didn't get what I'm saying. You have made a conclusion now that it's better to be anointed than to be beautiful. Say amen like thunder. I know you see, don't believe. Some of you have not processed it enough. Those idols are still standing. Like one. Love is a hard message to preach at the face of existential threat. Listen. On the cross, Luke 23. 39 to 43. Two thieves were with Jesus. What should be in the mind of anybody going through pain? Crucify. Did that deliver me? Or let me die? Isn't it? So one of the thieves said to Jesus, Oga, deliver us and deliver yourself. The other one said, be quiet. Don't you know that we are receiving just reward for our own error, but this one is an, it's, it's a righteous man. Lord, remember me 
in your kingdom. And Jesus in pain remembers somebody for paradise. You didn't get what I'm saying. If you don't have love, you will never be able to see where you can be a blessing. Do you know the only thing you'll be seeing? How you can be free. The only thing that will be on the mind of a man who does not have love on the cross is, is it that I come down from this cross and break this pain? You are not getting that message. That's what I call purpose. Jesus was on the cross. But why was he going through that pain? Is it ultimately it was for men to find a place? So he found a nexus between his pain and, and his purpose. And I said, okay, this pain is all that you can be with me. But the other man, this pain is so that I can just get free or die. It's called get rich or die trying. You don't hear purpose in that type of thing. It's called get rich or die trying. That's the second thief. Is that you deliver them or you, or you become useless? If you cannot deliver us or more code, don't, don't preach religious message here. Yeah, let's all die. Are you following me? But in Jesus' pain, he was giving somebody hope. May God give you capacity. Uh, you missed a good place to say amen. I said, may God give you capacity to be able to give hope even in your pains. Uh, you didn't say the amen very well. I said to be able to give hope even in your pains. Romans 12 verse 21 said, Over, don't be overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. Don't be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Listen, be filled so much with God's love that the more you see evil in this world, the more of God's goodness comes out of you. That even on the cross of your pain, you can still see paradise for somebody else. Overcome evil with good. Are you following me? It's now it's a world where nobody can trust. Or go trust God to give you capacity to go and develop that capacity in people. And tell people that you can live a life of trust. Trust can be in marriages. Marriage does not have to be cat and mouse. Five minutes, your wife left. You can pick four. A long key. Don't die. You can't even secure your family like that. How many of you have discovered that sin is getting sophisticated? So you are just too far behind, isn't it? Please call in. Now, I'm not giving anybody like you too. If your husband or your wife can't carry your phone, you have problem. Do you hear what I said? I love you that he says, it's not my phone, it's not my phone. Uh -uh. Then the guy remembered the day he bought it in ShopRite. More than phone, more than phone. Hey, mama, phone me. Everything, only boundary. What is in it? If you are not hiding, he that comes to equity will come with clean hands. The righteous is bold. Like a lion. When you are not bold, there is unrighteousness somewhere. That's why you are hiding. I used to tell mama, see, the way I used to talk to mama about anywhere I am, like you think I have mad diarrhea. I would say, oh, today in the office, this person came to see me. Because there is nothing. No, I imagine, come on. God has put somebody in your life to secure you. You are hiding from the person. Let your yes be yes. And your no be no. Where are you? I'm in general gas. Say amen. And let there be peace. Not I am somewhere. Somewhere, somewhere. There. All you married men, say amen. It's not that you will not say, No, why are you to be asking me questions? Why are you asking me questions? If they don't ask you, who will ask you? Glory to God. First Peter 2 18. I'm blessed. Are you blessed? Are you blessed, church? 
1 Peter 2 18, servants be submissive to your masters with all fear, not only to the good and the gentle, but also to the ash. Do all these things. The, as the, the asher the world becomes, the more gentle you must be. The more evil the world becomes, the more good you must be. You must have something greater than the world in you. That's what Jesus put inside of you. Are, you, are we together? The world has no reason for them to love you, for you to love it anymore. But you can't eat. Challenge you have today is that you can't eat. You are an embodiment of love. Because you have received God's love. Are you following me, church? Are you following me? Let's read Luke, 20, Luke 6, 27 to 36. We are almost true. Luke 6, 27 to 36. But I say to you, who hear, love your enemies. Hey, may God give you capacity. The more you go around and everybody, there's so much hatred, so much mistrust, so much distrust. May your own capacity for trust and love be on the increase. Love though, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. What did he say again? Bless those who curse you. Say bless. And pray for those who spitefully use you. Yes? To him who strikes you on, the, on one cheek, offer also the left. And the pastor of agenda there. Don't worry. I'm teaching you the pathway to power. I'm teaching you how your activities will become a coal of fire upon your enemy. And they strike you on the right, turn your day, offer the other. If they take for your clothes, do not withhold your tunic either. They took your clothes, give them your vest, singlet, your vest. Give to everyone who asks you. And from him who takes your goods and do not, do not ask them back. Don't create, say, I borrowed him 15,000, 77 years ago. If he has stopped talking about it, stop talking about it too. Because he has forgotten. Don't have a potential for what somebody else has forgotten. Don't ask. I'm not saying give him again, but don't ask. Don't put your life on a pause when the world has moved on. Are you hearing me? He <laughs> And just, and just as you want men to do to you, you also do to them likewise. Continue. But if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. Are you following? If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do to what? Even in Tamak, there is such love. Am I, to, am I making sense? Somebody that bought beer for you, you buy beer for them. Oh, more, more, yeah, oh, more, more, yeah. That's not the type of love I'm describing here. Even Tamak people, drunkards, have that type of love. You must exceed it. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to Even sinners, even prostitutes do that type of love. Are you hearing me? Continue. But if you learn to those who. And if you learn to those from whom you hope to receive back, what credit is that to you? For even sinners learn to sinners to receive as much back. Love your enemies. Do good. Learn. Open for nothing in return. God will expand your capacity. And your reward will be great. And you will be sons of the Most High. He is kind to the unthankful and to the evil. He is kind to the unthankful and to the evil verse 36 therefore be merciful just as your father also is merciful so when you get home read Ezekiel 33 1 to 11 Ezekiel 3 6, 16 to 21 he spoke about the watchman watchman if I raise you and there's an impending judgment and you don't speak I will require their blood from your hand. So the greatest motivation of the watchman is two types of blood. Their blood and his own blood. But I've added a new type of motivation to yours. The blood of Jesus. So sometimes even when we are free from the blood of all men, we are still shouting because we know that he purchased them with his own blood. 
So we, if we have no motivation in the natural, we still find a consequential motivation in Jesus. That's why we can do good to them that do not do us anything. Because sometimes we don't hold them anything except that we know that one whom we love, love them. And if you love me, you feed my sheep. If you love me, you tend my flock. Are you following me, church? So that's my message for you tonight. Maybe I should give you two more scriptures. James 3, 8 to 10. James 3, 8 to 10. Thank you, Jesus. But no man can tame the thong. It's an unruly evil full of deadly poison. With it we bless God and the Father. And with it we cause men who have been made in the similitude of God. How do you bless God and cause his image? If you don't really love that image you are seeing, you love the God in which that image is made. And so because of that, it is an aberration for blessing and cursing to proceed out of the same mouth. My brethren, these things ought not to be. And if you, are keep, if you keep looking at men, you will have reasons to curse. One day you say, ah, if I. But if you can see God in people, see at least, even an unbeliever is made in his image. Are you following me? He might not have his likeness. But this is image. I can't bless God and cause his image. It's just a consequential thing. Because I've accepted the main judgment, God. I'm compelled by God's love to accept the consequence. His image. Even when they are not deserving. Do you get what I'm saying? And you know, so where I started from is how the Bible described a man who had a lamb. And the lamb hit with the man's plate, drink from the man's cup, sleep on the man's bed, and there was like a daughter to the man. How do you breach those two walls? That's what the love of God does. It breaches these walls for us. Finally, stand to your feet. First Corinthians 8, Moses 5. For even if they are so-called gods, whether in heaven or not, there are many gods and many lords. Continue. But for us, there is one God. Somebody say, for us, there is one God. The Father of whom are all things and we from him. One Lord Jesus Christ, through whom are all things and through whom we live. However, there is not in everyone that knowledge. For some with the consciences of the idol, until now eat as a thing offered to an idol and their conscience being weak is the fact follow this thought but food does not commend us to God for neither if we eat are we better nor if we don't eat are we the worse but we are less somehow this liberty of yours become a stumbling block to those who are weak for if anyone sees you who have knowledge eating in an idol's temple with not the conscience of him which will be emboldened to eat the things offered to idols and because of your knowledge shall the weak brother perish for whom Christ died. Did you see again? Suddenly you have shifted from your desire to what? To the price of Christ. The reason why I will not do my will is not me anymore. I love Jesus too much than to allow his investment to fail in somebody's life. I would rather deny myself and allow his investment to prosper. If you love me, you feed my flock. So I could have looked at that brother. You, you don't have any knowledge. There's no God, any, no other God. There's only one God. But my liberty can become a stumbling block and make Jesus lose his investment. So I would rather withhold myself and allow Jesus to win every time. Is there somebody here that will make that choice tonight to allow Jesus to win every time? I am calling you to a new burden for men that he shed his blood for. You've met a lot of them today. Are you following me? 
Can you imagine Jesus on the cross dying for men and cursing the thieves? Say, you people, if I be a man of God, let fire roast you. He's fighting his own mission. Uh, Lord, let your love compel me tonight. When the love of God compels you, you will jump barriers. <laughs> you will create a connection. A man will talk to a lamb and they will look like they are friends. <laughs> it's not because they are friends. It's love. That's what the love of God does. With look, I want you to ask and ask for a compelling power of God to invade your life again. A compelling power of God's love for men to invade you afresh. Who desires all men to be saved and to come? You are not getting this burden tonight. And to come to the knowledge. We have a church that is so so now satisfied with itself that they have forgotten the people he loves and he purchased with his own blood. We know. We know the price you pay. The blood of Jesus is, is holy. It's uncommon. It's unique. Scarcely will a, will, will a man die for a righteous man. But in Christ, when we were yet sinners, Invade me with an understanding of your love afresh. You will need it. Let it compel me. Let it affect my perception of men. Let it affect my ministry. So that we never do a half-hearted ministry anymore. So that we do ministry with passion. Let it affect the way I invite people. Let it affect the way I preach to people. The passion. Lord, only you know the possibilities that can come out of men. Give me grace. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. The book of Songs of Solomon showed us only one thing that is as compelling as death. Love is as strong as death. That's why when Jesus was on the cross, facing death the only other thing that will still work at that point was love I'm praying for you today that in the midst of pain love will still be at work the Bible says it's as strong as death if not stronger Lord shed abroad your love in my heart by the Holy Spirit pray for that pray that prayer when last did you go out on missions when last did you support somebody going there when last did you stretch yourself? Miss a meal for somebody. Miss the meal for somebody. Are you always satisfying yourself and still you are talking about the love of God? Oh my God. I receive an understanding tonight of your love. Oh Lord. We receive your love, oh Lord, we receive your love, oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, we receive your love. Pray one final prayer. Peter, do you love me more than this? Yes, you know I love you. Feed my sheep. The proof of your love 
is how you prize what he loves. If you love somebody, you will love whatever they love. And Jesus loves men. Lord, today, give me grace to feed your sheep. There is sheep everywhere you meet. Feed them, to tend them, to give attention. Are you following me? Not to feel is a waste of time. At, at attending to people, strengthening people's end, praying for people. It's not to, it's no waste of time. If you love me, feed my sheep. Somebody take a fresh challenge to feed the sheep. I should bring them my path. Lord, you give me my their word to feed your sheep. Let me feed somebody. Let me stand with somebody. Disciple somebody. Pray for somebody. Let me lead somebody to conviction. Let me lead somebody to devotion. Let me lead somebody to praise. Let me lead somebody to prayer. If you love me, you feed my sheep. That's the only proof. That's the consequential order that follows that law. And it happens in the atmosphere of law. Somebody receive it and say, Father, Lord, give me more burden to bring more people to your feet. That's a proof of love. It's not just to come and be fed. It's to feed somebody. We have to start feeding somebody. You have to start feeding his flock. It's beautiful to be fed. But if you love him, you tend this flock. You feed this flock. Who are you feeding tonight? Where are you giving time and attention and prayer and devotion to so that the person can come to the knowledge of the Lord and to the saving knowledge of the Lord? The person can understand that there is a mediator and there is a ransom that is paid. What price? We receive your law. Oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, we receive. Your love, oh Lord, we receive. It will break you from the shackles of self, oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, we receive your love. process this thought in the heart of all of us to receive your love, to walk in the fear of the Lord, to see your flock everywhere on the mountains, in the schools in the cars, in our churches, in our street and to feed them with the word of truth so that we'll be free from the blood of all men. Now our blood will not be guilty most importantly your blood will not be in vain thank you tonight in jesus name we have prayed are you blessed tonight hallelujah